Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you what it takes to create the type of a sticky header that shows and hides as you scroll. More precisely, what it takes to create one by using the G-Sap and Scroll Trigger in Elementor. Both the G-Sap and Scroll Trigger are available with my plugin Steroids for Elementor, which is completely free. In order to be able to comprehend what this tutorial is all about, you gotta have A. Some basic understanding of JavaScript B. Have an idea what is the G-Sap and Scroll Trigger and C. Be sure that you have these two enabled under Steroids for Elementor Manage JS Libraries. So let's get started. I already have prepared everything I'm going to need today. The topmost section is going to mimic my site header, which means that's not the real Elementor header template. However, rest assured, it doesn't make any difference. It can be just a section, the real header template, the header created with the header footer and blocks plugin for Elementor, or even the theme header that has nothing to do with Elementor. Everything will work just fine. The rest of the content on this page can be taken as a placeholder for the future tutorials on a GSAP and scroll trigger topic. So there will be more very soon. The first step is to give the custom ID to my show height header section. So I'll go to the advanced tab, advanced panel, and simply enter the unique identifier aka element ID into the CSS ID input field. It's going to be OB site header. As we are about to write some custom code, we'll either need the third party WordPress plugin that allows adding the custom code, or in case you have the Elementor Pro version, you can use the custom code feature. This time, I'll consolidate with those people who don't have the Pro version, and I'm going to use the third party plugin named Custom CSS and JavaScript. It's free and I'll put the download link to this video description. Today I'll need both the CSS and the JavaScript. That's why I'm going to open each in a separate browser tab. My next step is to lock position of the header element. So I have to make it fixed and always atop of every other element on page. So the ID of the header is OB side header. Position property will be fixed. Z index should be something really high, something like, I don't know, 999. And in case that's not enough, for some reason, increase to whatever is right. And finally, the width, which must be 100%. At the end, I'll just save my custom CSS code. Now let's go back to the editor for a while to check for any visual impact of the code that I just wrote. As you can see, my fixed header now covers the underlying element, which is the hero section, and which doesn't seem to be right because we'll have to use the navigator in order to access the hero section. What I can do to avoid any problems of that kind is to make my custom CSS code work in the front end only. That's why I'll go back to the code and prepend the site header rule with the negation pseudo class, body not, which says that whenever the body element doesn't have a class name Elementor Editor active, apply the rule normally. The custom class name Elementor Editor Active is only added to the body element when we are editing our page in Elementor. Let's handle the JavaScript now. In order to save some typing time, I'll go to my gist library first and then copy the chunk of code that I use like a starter whenever I need the gsap library in Elementor. It's the anonymous function that includes the gsap scroll trigger checkpoint and says that in case both of them have become a part of the window object, their properties and methods are safe to be used. So now I'll just have to rename the existing function to something more appropriate like show height header. Let's say show height header. Because in the future I'll add more functions, each of which will be in charge for a different task. You can find the link to my gist starter code in the description of this video as well and use it if you like. Next, let's create the reference to our site header. So it's gonna be const, constant, site header. If you recall, the ID of our header section is OB site header. And if I didn't label the site header in first place, it would be much more difficult to access or create the reference to that element in JavaScript. In general, when it comes to animation, there's more than just one way to animate that header in GSAP, effects-wise, of course, but the logic is only one. And it says that whenever the page is scrolled down, play the animation of the header moving upward off the viewport. And if the page is scrolled up, play the same animation in reverse. 
So the point is to create the simple GSAP animation that will be controlled by the scroll trigger because the scroll trigger can tell whether the page is scrolled up or down. So let's start. Let's create the animation first. Uh, I'm gonna store my animation in a variable so I can use it like a reference to the animation itself later whenever is needed. Initially, the, the site header is going to be positioned off the viewport. Its Y position should be minus 100% of its own height, which is enough to hide it entirely. The animation should last for 0.25 seconds or whatever works for you. 0.25 will be good for me. And I'll add the sign out ease effect to make it more to make it move more naturally. Again, it's a matter of personal preference. Alrighty, that's what it takes to animate the header. Let's now see how to trigger the animation with a scroller. So, I'll create a scroll trigger instance first. As you can see, I have separated the GSAP animation from the scroll trigger, even though I could have mix and match. Quite often, you'll find the scroll trigger code being written as a part of the GSAP animation, but I wanted to make things as clear as possible. Anyhow, let's define the start point. We have to tell the scroll trigger when exactly to trigger the animation. It's gonna be top top, or otherwise, when the top of the header hits the top of the viewport. I did not define the trigger element because the start property represents the trigger point itself in this case. Because of the fact that the header animation can happen anytime direction of the scroller is changed or updated, we have to keep the scroll trigger in a state of alert, so to speak, all the time. That's why we have to use the onUpdate function, which gets called every time the progress or the scroll position changes. And in case the change happens, we have to check whether the scroll direction is forward or backward, so that the appropriate animation can be played. Direction of minus one means that the scroller is moved backward or that the page is scrolled up, so the header should slide into the viewport. If direction is anything else but minus one, the header should stay hidden. The GSAP can play the same animation in reverse as well, which is great because I don't have to create another animation instance that hides the header. Let's save the code and let's see what we got in the front end. Okay, that's great. But there are two things that I like to change. The first one relates to the header initial position or animation. If I refresh the page, you'll notice that the header animation is played immediately and I would love to avoid it. Why? Well, because I don't like it. The second one relates to the fact that the header animation is played too quickly, too soon. So if I move the scroller just a little bit, the header goes off the view, which is not that great as well. What I want instead is to bring some scrolling pause, let's say, 100 pixels pause. So, in order to fix that initial animation, I'll go back to the animation code and I'll send the playhead to the end of the timeline. I'm gonna use the progress property, okay? The progress of any animation has the range between zero and one, where one represents the end of animation. And that's what makes the page header actually skip that initial slide down. When it comes to the scrolling pause, all I have to do is to add some offset to the scroll trigger start property. So I'm gonna deduct 100 from the scroller top position. So it's gonna be plus 100. I know it may seem a little bit awkward, but it's just the way the number is concatenated to the string in this case. Okay, let's save the changes and do the preview. As you can see, it all works fine. If you want, you can download the training file the link is in the description of this video as usually, and you can play with the different settings. Alrighty, I guess that's it. Now you know how to create the show height header in Elementor by using the GSAP and the scroll trigger. In case you have something to say or ask the question, you may post a comment below. And if you plan to buy the pro version of Elementor, please use my own affiliate link that can be found in the description of this video. Why? Because that's how you help me earn some cash that's used to fund steroids for Elementor plugin. Other than that, thanks for watching, peace and love.